Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and hello everyone. Distinguished guests, listeners, viewers and participants of IDEAT and UTLF conference. Thank you very much for having me here. It's great pleasure to share with you this topic micro credential redefining learning and reimagining credential. First, uh, I would like to thank the organizer of IDEAT for having me to share on this topic, which to me is um, one of the game changers in higher education and everyone should embark on this. And I've been uh, involved in micro-credential in the past two years at the university as well, as well as at the national level and also with the MQA to come up with a guideline, national guideline for the implementation of micro-credential. So these are some of the talking points I'll be um, touching on. I'll talk about learning in the digital age. And these are basically how people learn in the digital age and how the, I mean, the reason why we should embark on micro-credential. And moving from the time-based, traditional time-based education, which is very rigid into a so-called competency-based education, which is more flexible. And about the micro-credential itself, or digital badges. These two terms are being used interchangeably. And the idea of stackable credentials, which to me is a, the, the enablers that would uh, enable us to make the education um, very, very flexible. So first of all, I would like to ask you to experience micro-credential. So if you can go on your phone and uh, type in this address, and then the password is 1234 and you can do this on your phone now very very easy and very quick one so once you go to this link and put in the password you should be able to access my short module here or I call it micro module which basically you can complete the whole module within like uh, less than 10 minutes and then uh, basically this is how most students will access learning in the future on their phone. So basically, when we talk about micro-credential, we are offering the content or the subject matter in the form of small chunk, a small piece of content. And in that, that content is in the form of module, which can be done within, you know, like uh, half an hour or one hour. And inside the module, we will have um, a mix of content, like a short, a series of short videos, text, uh, learning activities uh, and also the assessment as well so maybe you know you want to spend a few minutes to browse through the module just to experience on the learner side or on the student side how we can bring how we offer the micro credential or the micro module on uh, the mobile device basically in the future most of the learning will happen on the smartphone uh, even now uh, my students, for example, 99.9% .9 of them prefer to use their smartphone to access the learning content. So this is an example of short module, uh, which actually leverage on the concept of micro learning. Because in this days, the concentration span of average adult learners are very, very short. It's in the, it's in the order of like 8 seconds or 9 seconds. So can you imagine that when we deliver the content online, so this uh, in the in the online env environment, the concentration span is very short, and therefore we need. Uh, th therefore, that's the reason why micro credential is actually delivering content or learning in the form of short uh, chunk of uh, content uh, to address the issue of short concentration span of our millennial learners. Now, suppose uh, I um, let's say let's assume that you have gone through the whole module, you. Uh, have done the assessment and you have submitted uh, the assignment uh, successfully. In this case, the assignment will be demonstration of the skill to prepare a strawberry jam. So once we have completed the assignment and the, instructors, the instructor says that you have achieved the, the, the standard, so meaning that you have acquired the specific competency here. In this case, it's actually a skill-based competency, which is how to make the strawberry jam. So once you have successfully completed the module, 
there must be some form of evidence of your learning. So this is a recognition of the learning. And this is where the credential comes in, in the form of digital credential, which basically in the form of digital badge or digital badges. And inside the digital badge, we can put in all the information in terms of what you have done, what kind of skill that you have acquired, your competency, your proficiency, and, and so on, everything, all the information, even the learning artifacts, example of the video, example of your assignment, example of uh, discussion, everything that you know that you have done, uh, you can selectively put this learning evidence or learning artifacts, we call it, in the digital badge. So let's imagine if the prospective employer want to know exactly what you have achieved in this particular module, what kind of competencies that you have got, so they can simply click and they can see everything in that inside that digital badge. So that digital badge is a form of credential or micro credential because it is based on a micro content, micro module. That's, ladies and gentlemen, basically the basic ideas, the essence or the gist of micro credential. Very simple. Okay. So this is an example of the how the module looks like on my laptop. So I'm not going to go through this, uh, but basically the module has been designed to fit any screen size. It looks good on the phone, it looks good on the laptop, it looks good on the bigger screen. That's how we deliver micro credential in the form of online module that the students can have access to it. Uh, then they, they can have access to it anytime they like. We make it very flexible. Now, the concept of digital badge that I would like to mention just now, let's assume that you have completed one module on making fruit jam from strawberry fruits. So you have demonstrated this competency. So we, uh, the, the, the training provider will give you one digital badge. And let's say you go on and take another five modules uh, within the within the package, which is basically how to make fruit jam from different type of fruits. So the student have completed on strawberry. Then maybe they can, they can take another module on, uh, let's say, uh, apple jam. Another module on pine apple jam. Another module on mango jam. Another module on uh, uh, durian jam, and another module on banana jam. So six different types of fruit jam and the students have completed all the six module. They now have got six digital badges, six kind of skills to prepare uh, strawberry, uh, sorry, to prepare fruit jam from different kind of fruits. Now they can package or bundle all these digital badges together and they can get a full certificate, certificate in fruit jam making. So the concept of bundling of the digital badge to get a higher qualification, that's also the form of um, um, what we call stackable credential. And let's say the student go on and take another package. Just now, he or she just completed certificate in fruit jam making. And now um, she, go for another, she goes for another certificate. There are six digital badges or six uh, kind of uh, skill there. Uh, in this case, fruit pickle making, six different type of fruits, finish all the six module, get another certificate, and he or she can go on and take another certificate in fruit leather making. So it's interrelated, uh, three packages or three bundles, consists of um, 18 digital badges. One is, then she can uh, she end up with three certificate, certificate in fruit jam making, certificate in fruit pickle, and certificate in fruit leather making. And now, the student now can stack these three packages and she can get a higher qualification, in this case, advanced certificate in fruit-based products. That is what we call stackable credential. That's basically the essence and the gist of micro-credential where the students now are given the flexibility flexibility and the freedom to take the modules, bundle the modules together, get a certificate, then go on and take a few more certificates, which is part of the larger 
qualification or a larger package, stack them together and then they can get a higher qualification and we can carry on doing that uh, and create a pathway even for the student to get let's say a diploma or even a degree and this is already can be done now uh, through the MQA micro credential guideline okay uh, in the first scenario where one institution offering a series of uh, badges or modules and packages uh, which which have been mapped to the uh, program the accredited academic program from the university so the all this all the modules and all the packages have been actually mapped to the to the accredited program so whoever take whenever whenever the student take the package if they take the complete package and that would allow them to go and enroll in the university and they can get a hundred percent credit transfer and they will get a formal qualification so the idea of doing this is to provide flexibility and the freedom to the students and um, this is the scenario let's say this is a student here um, this is uh, his dashboard or his uh, e-portfolio so the student take uh, several modules from Microsoft here this is actually the actual Microsoft uh, digital badge and then you know uh, he can display the student can display the digital badge as an evidence of that uh, he has taken this module from Microsoft and that this mo this digital badge is actually shareable in on any uh, social media platform and it contains a lot of metadata and information inside here and uh, you can also have the uh, if we need the authentication or the verification uh, we can use uh, the digital badge that has a blockchain uh, the, uh, behind it and then we can verify the authenticity of the digital badge using a blockchain uh, system so uh, ladies and gentlemen Nowadays, uh, we can find many online platforms now offering different, uh, many, uh, many uh, subjects uh, online in the form of online course or online module. For example, here we have Udemy. And um, I, I have a personal story where, you know, I learned how to do stock trading by taking several courses on Udemy. And then I managed to do, uh, you know, stock trading successfully just by taking all these four or five courses online but then if i want to get some form of recognition that i know something i have some skill on doing stock trading who would give me the digital badge or some form of recognition currently we don't have the system that would kind of uh, provide this kind of recognition in the form in, in any form because i just learned one very specific skill here okay so um if i ask you have you ever learned anything useful from youtube I'm sure 90% or 99% even will say that they have learned something from you from YouTube, useful from YouTube. Let's say if you watch three minutes video and you learn one particular skill, let's say how to fold the, you know, to make the origami, and and then you practice and you can create something, you know, very beautiful. By do, by by watching just three minutes YouTube video, you have acquired the skill, you have mastered the skill even if you practice, but who would give you that recognition that you know origami currently we have no way of doing that okay because this is it's kind of informal uh, learning that we learn from uh, various uh, platform and various uh, sources so um, i just skip this one um, so what I'm, i want to say and you know emphasize the point here that learning nowadays because of the power of technology and the connectivity that we have although we still have a digital divide the issue but um, things are progressing very fast in terms of the you know the technology and the connectivity so learning can happen anywhere ubiquitous learning but then we need to address uh, the issue of short attention span and therefore we want to deliver learning uh, in the form of bite size or in the form of small piece of you know learning or chunk and using the concept of micro learning so from from micro learning that's where we get micro module micro credential in the form of digital batch which is a form of digital credential so as jeff winner said um, he's a linkedin ceo 
He said, this is a moment in history when people can learn anytime, anywhere, and with no boundaries. Basically, with the connectivity that we have, with the affordable device in the form of smartphone that now almost everyone has in their hand, the powerful computer that we have, and the connectivity. And we have in the internet, huge repository of knowledge out there. So meaning that almost anyone can learn online, almost anyone also can teach online. So we should leverage on this fact and embark on micro-credential because we can reach out learners from all over the world. There's no basically boundary as long as people can get connected. So the issue here, when we talk about uh, micro-credential in the digital world, how do we recognize and value the way people learn in the digital way, in the, in the digital world today? So this is uh, the so-called the rise of digital credential, which I believe is the next game changer. I truly believe digital credential or alternative credential will be the next game changer. With the technology, with the 5G around the corner, uh, the digital dis disruption, how people learn in the, the, the digital era will change uh, tremendously. So in the digital era now, people expect to work, to learn, socialize and play whenever and wherever they want to. They have total freedom to control their own learning, the pace, the time, you know, uh, the place. Therefore, uh, this is what we call uh, learning on demand or LOD, anytime, anywhere. But not just in case, just in case, just like, you know, how we design curriculum and believe that the students would learn, would use what, whatever they learn in the workplace. But can we design uh, our program, academic program, for example, so that it will become very flexible, very fluid, very dynamic, so that we can tailor to the needs just in time, just enough and just for me, meaning that very personalized. Okay. So this is what we call learning on demand and that's what micro-credential is about. Making learning and education very flexible and we, we can actually deliver uh, in a very flexible way without much constraint on the physical uh, boundary. So just in time and just enough, I want to stress more on this point because that's what micro-credential able to deliver. So um, if we look back at in April 28, 2003, how Apple and iTunes changed the music world, that's really a game changer. Uh, in the old days, uh, and, and this is also where, you know, now we have iTunes, we have Spotify, and we have Pandora, we have YouTube. And in the old days, you know, um, so um, yeah, iTunes basically uh, is a concept, a very clever concept that celebrated the song not the whole album so in the old days if we want to uh, you know get one or two songs you know in one album that is very very good song but uh, we cannot buy one or two single uh, two songs from one whole album we have to buy the whole album so you know take it or leave it but there's only only one or two songs that is you know nice there are maybe another 10 songs in the album that we don't like but we have to buy the whole album. So, but when Apple came uh, and introduced iTunes, they negotiated with the music industry. And uh, what happened was basically now history, but it has transformed the whole music world. So now we can actually buy only the song that we want, the song that we love to hear, and we just pay for it. Pay per song. Just enough, just for me. Very personalized and you can create your own playlist of favorite song okay so when we think about education instead of let's say you enroll in four-year program and I have to pay the fees for the whole four years but in the end probably I don't need to use my four years education in the real world so if that is the case just in time just enough can I just be buy let's say a few courses that is most relevant to me now in the context of, of my job rather than paying for the whole degree. But of course, there are people that who, who want to get a formal qualification so they can take, I know, uh, they can take the modules and the courses as, at their own time rather than paying for the whole program because they are not sure whether they will complete the whole, the whole program. 
But if they choose to take only a few courses for their own professional development, they can do that. But if they want to take the whole program to get the degree, they can also do that. We provide that flexibility. So this is what we call the iTunes model of education. Um, you know, pay per course or pay per module that you really need at this particular time. Okay, and it's very flexible. If you have the money, you can pay. If you have the time, you can study. If you don't want to study, you can stop. So when you have the motivation again, you can buy another module. So that's how the things are actually uh, designed to make it very flexible for the student. So I see in the future uh, what I call this a three tier, uh, three tiers of education. The streaming model, which basically we watch the YouTube, we learn something, but we cannot really get the full package. Uh, you cannot get a very kind of, kind of uh, formal uh, curriculum uh, in YouTube, uh, very very detailed. Uh, so the what we call streaming model. Think think of YouTube, but in the future, and this is what the micro credential as a game changer that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this is what I think the model that will be that will prevail, uh, and I call I call this subscription or pay per view model, meaning that. I don't want to buy the whole four-year program. I just want to buy several courses that to me most relevant. I just need that particular knowledge or skill at this particular time. So just in time. And I just need these courses just enough. And I can personalize it just for me. So we are separating the so-called uh, marketable academic credential from the whole degree. We unpack the whole degree and we can offer in pieces or bit and pieces. But then... Uh, if the student choose to take the whole program, they can put all those pieces or packages or in module, put them together, bundle them, and they can get a full degree. That's basically what my credential is about. And of course, we can carry on. Um, I'm not saying that uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, education would be obsolete or the university will be uh, irrelevant. No, I think the university, the residential experience will still be there. But now we offer uh, another model uh, for those who want to have a more flexible kind of education com uh, compared to another group that go come through normal channel and they can go through the four-year uh, time-based uh, system. So uh, now learning gets more personal and more personalized. So basically, we are moving from one size fits all to a more personalized education through micro-credential. So learning gets more personal. So, um, we can see now education and work workforce are changing. And the driving force behind this, of course, is the technology, the globalization, among other things. So, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, currently we are, we are doing this so-called traditional credentialing, which is the prevailing system now. The student enter through the UPU, they have to go through the four year, year one, year two, until year four. They have to collect 120 credits to graduate and get a degree. And the degree itself is called macro credential. And they have to collect 120 credits only. Only then they can get a degree. If they, let's say, fail halfway, let's say in, on the third year they, they decided to, you know, uh, to, to quit. So they will end up with nothing. Nothing to show that they have gone through three years. But they have learned something. But the system doesn't allow that. Either you have the 20, 120 credits or you don't get anything at all. So all or nothing. <laughs> That's very rigid and very uh, inflexible, right? So now with... Um, so a degree at the end of the four years is actually a recognition of formal education. It's a full-fledged, comprehensive, and it's why I call just-in-case curriculum. We put everything there thinking that just in case the student will will need this knowledge or this skill when they graduate from the university. But it turned out that, you know, they only probably use only about 20%. Rigid, time-based, and macro-credential. That is the existing uh, kind of program that we have in the university. Micro-credential is, is the opposite of all these points, you know. Um, and what's more, furthermore, a degree doesn't give a true depth of one's competency. You know, it just shows the grades. Uh, even the student get a 4 flat 4.0, it doesn't mean that 
he or she is really, really competent in the real sense. So now I would like to share how we can approach the micro-credential for our academic program and how to unbundle or unpack the curriculum into the micro-credential format. So just imagine uh, that currently what we have, uh, what I call buying just in case curriculum, the student enroll into the four-year program and they have to pay for the whole four-year program and they have to wait, go through the system time-based for four years, get 120 worth of credit hours, then only they can graduate with a degree. And this basically the full-fledged comprehensive program and this what just now I mentioned about just in case curriculum and um, this uh, very rigid or time-based and also what, what we call as a micro credential. So now we are moving from there, from the time-based, rigid time-based into a competency-based or just in time, just enough and just for me very personalized. So basically what we can do here, we unpack the whole curriculum offer the program into packages and modules and the learners now will have the flexibility and total control to take uh, the module and the package as and when they 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 have the you know uh, they are ready to do that so when we look at the big picture here if we start with the academic program the credit bearing program 120 credits we can uh, how do we micro credential micro-credentialize this program. We can break, up, break, break the program into packages and into you know, courses. At the course level, we can uh, modularize uh, the, the, to become a module. So we end up with a certain number of module and each module would carry a digital badge as an evidence of learning or competency. So this actually for the academic program that uh, this credit bearing and the same thing if we we can also do this for the non-academic program and we can offer as a freestanding program uh, it can be a credit bearing or non-credit bearing if the package come from the academic program then we can offer it as a credit bearing program because it's already mapped to the normal uh, program outcome but we can also offer as a professional or upskilling program which is non-credit bearing let's say you know the the one day short course that we have been doing we can also uh, offer the program in the form of micro-credential. We can uh, break up into module and then each module will carry, uh, will be awarded a digital badge. So basically this is how we can structure the academic program into a micro-credential and we can offer the, pa the, the package uh, separately as a freestanding program for uh, people or from uh, for working adults for example um, uh, if, if they want to take the package it can be as part of the professional development or it can be also uh, they take it as part of the bigger program for a degree or for a diploma so basically we have the pro curriculum then we unpack the curriculum into a series of uh, several packages and each package we have several courses and the course can be modularized into several modules each one will carry uh, a digital badge upon completion. And this package can be, you know, can be offered as a standalone or freestanding program. Uh, that can be offered as, uh, you know, we can call it, um, well, the name here must not, um, we cannot use the same uh, terminology like in the MQF. We can use any other names uh, as well, as long as it doesn't, you know, uh, it does not clash with the name in the M MQF. And we can offer this as upskilling or reskilling program. Okay. And uh, this is one example of how we can create a pathway. Let's say uh, we have a degree program. We can unpack the program into several packages. And in each package, we have several module and digital batch. So the student can take each package of this and stack them together. And if they wish, they can transfer the credit to get a full degree. So basically, uh, that's how we can create a pathway a very flexible pathway for the learners through a micro-credential program. This is actually a pathway uh, bridging the non-formal or informal uh, education or environment uh, learning into a formal qualification. Uh, and this is actually especially uh, relevant for those uh, people uh, not in the normal uh, 
formal education environment but those people are who are working and still they want to get a formal qualification so we can provide this kind of pathway through micro credential so i would um, my my i would en envi envision or envisage that in 2021 and beyond you would have our normal accredited face to face program the conventional program and at the same time we can offer the micro credential version of it side by side or concurrently and then we can un unpack into packages that we can offer as an upskilling or reskilling uh, program or for lifelong learning program and we can build a bridge um, where the student who take this uh, module they can get the credit transfer through FLA or FLC FLC for credit transfer and admission through the FLA and this provide open up the you know uh, great uh, opportunities for everyone to get a formal qualification in the form of dipl diploma or a degree and that this is where also the opportunity great opportunity here that i can foresee how the industry and university can work together to offer uh, this kind of program through micro credential mechanism so um, basically this is actually just how to micro credentialize the program uh, from the program level to the course level and from the course level to the module level so this basically the modular modular modularization of the whole program into modules then each of this module can be bundled and packaged and we can offer as a separate uh, standalone or freestanding uh, you know kind of certificate program um, so um, basically um, the credential here the alternative credential that i mentioned earlier is in the form of digital badge and we have the authentication in the using the blockchain and using the concept of stackable credential which i've mentioned uh, earlier and um, this is where i think the great opportunity we can move from the time-based rigid time-based system into competency-based uh, system or education by using micro credential okay and um, as um, you know as i mentioned earlier a degree doesn't say a lot because you just have the scroll and the transcript but a digital badge you can actually put in a lot of information there it's just a representation a graphical representation of uh, of the uh, knowledge and skill but inside we can actually embed a lot of information uh, like this we can the badge name the the, the badge issuer uh, and the information about the learner uh, and the skill everything can be embedded here and also the learning artifacts can be also embedded inside and this example of uh, the kind of stuff or evidence of learning that um, you know we can embed in the digital batch so it contains a lot of useful information especially for the prospective employer and these are only some example of corporate digital badges oracle microsoft uh, cisco here this is actually from microsoft so basically we can use blockchain uh, as the technology to authenticate the the, the authenticity of the digital the, the digital badge uh, to, to to avoid the, the issue of um, fake digital badge because even a degree people can fake nowadays uh, let alone let alone digital badge so um, i think that that's about all uh, that i want to share with you in terms of the micro credential and this is, this is only some example of how we can create a pathway uh, from a degree we can unpack into packages that we can offer as a standalone or freestanding program that the students can take and then uh, they can stack them together to get a full qualification here so if the students start from here the various uh, packages here they can stack them and finally they will get a degree so i guess uh, this example of digital credential provider uh, the digital batch provider uh, a credible credly uh, ready cred open learning open creds so um, i would say that the great opportunity for industry pro training providers and also the higher educational providers to work together and collaborate using micro credential micro credential as the enablers to offer flexible education uh, for everyone 
And this is one example of so-called three-stack credential framework model where the industry component and the academic component can be combined together with different partners. So thank you very much for listening. I would invite you to, if you would like to have a copy of the slide, to um, download from this link. You can see, you can take the picture here. So I would like uh, once again to take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, the organizer I did for inviting me uh, to share uh, on this topic on micro credential. And I hope uh, it's, um, it will benefit you and perhaps next you will be ready to embark on micro credential and also op uh, online education. Um, I mean, together with uh, you know other universities uh, around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening and uh, good day.